I'm nervous. This is just draining. It's lose lose as a Norwich fan. This is absolutely massive. It's going to be wonderful for the neutral. Football fans don't like surprises, do they? You know, you can only moan for so long before you start boring yourself. And I won't have that they're a lottery. They're brutal, but they're not a lottery. Hello guys, welcome to this episode of the Sportsman Untitled podcast. We've got a very exciting episode for you today because it's Norwich versus Ipswich in the Championship this weekend, the East Anglian Derby. And who better to talk about it with me than Jack Reeve from Talk Norwich City and Benjamin Bloom, Ipswich Town fan and Championship expert. Jack, let's start with you. How are you feeling ahead of this one? It's it's huge, isn't it? It is massive, and um, I'm, I'm sure Ben will will uh, will agree with me later on in the show. But it's rare that both of these sides are, are at the top end of the championship table. It's been a somewhat of a, of a yellow and green dominance over the past decade, but that is changing. Um, uh, I'm sure Ben will be will be happy about that. But yeah, it's massive for, for different reasons. Um, I think Norwich are coming into this one slightly better off than we were in the reverse fixture at Portman Road. We somehow scrambled to a draw in that one. I think this one will be a, a slightly more even contest. We've been really good at Carrow Road for the last couple of months. So, um, yeah, feeling somewhat more optimistic than I was if you'd have spoken to me Um it's it, sort of the latter end of last year, um, but still, I mean, you look the, look at the way that it's which are going under McKenna. It's um, you know they're a frightening outfit, and uh, we're going to need to be all out to to get anything from this. It's um, yeah, I'm nervous. Ben, a slight smile of confidence there. How are you feeling out of this one? Table toppers, Ipswich Town. Mate, I've been smiling for about the last 18 months. You, you, you're talking to a guy whose team was rubbish for 20 years, who's now actually been winning for a little while. So. Um, no, I'm almost quite pleased that we had the Easter weekend just to, so we didn't have to think about this. And, you know, we, we, we're now past that and it went really well from an Ipswich point of view. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know how it is for the players, but for the likes of me and Jack, content creators, fans, this is just draining this coming week. <laughs> Um, for those of us kind of out of that East Anglia area, we're doing this on Zoom because you're so blooming far away from <laughs> Manchester. Um, but for those of us that aren't living and breathing this rivalry, why does it mean so much? Ben, do you want to start? Um, I think the the biggest thing about it is that you've got Suffolk and Norfolk, which is obviously kind of out on a limb, as you've just alluded to. And in Norfolk... There's Norwich and everyone supports Norwich. And in Suffolk, there's Ipswich and everyone supports Ipswich. And it's kind of county versus county. Um, the two clubs, as much as fans wouldn't like to admit it, are kind of similar in terms of their ability to, to draw um, supporters. And they've both had peaks in the history um obviously the Ipswich peaks came at a time with Alf Ramsey and Bobby Robson and then you would say pretty much I don't know what Jack would say the last 15 years certainly you could maybe push it to 20 Norwich have been in the ascendancy so it's a great rivalry because it's pretty evenly matched and the and I think the geography plays into it as well with something like where you guys are in the Northwest. There's a ton of clubs and there, there just isn't. And there is a lot of people who care very, very deeply what's going to happen in this game. Jack, how do you feel about that? Yeah, it's spot on. I think Ben alluded to it there. This is, you know, this is county against county. It's um, if you go to London or something, it, you've got a multitude of clubs in which to support. Norwich are the only professional club in Norfolk. Ipswich are the only fully professional club in Suffolk. It's a it's a cultural battle. It's it's a, a derby that has been played quite a lot over the last fifteen years. And you know, for 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 those supporters in my um, kind of age group, we have rarely seen Ipswich um, come out on top. And, and it does feel that that, that, that that tide is changing somewhat over the last couple of years under the brilliant work of the new ownership group there and, and Kira McKenna. So it's, um, it's huge. It's unique. I think if you, if you're not from these parts, you, you probably don't get it. It's not going to be the most aggressive. It's not going to be, you know, the most bloody, but it's, it's certainly going to be competitive and it means a hell of a lot to those people that are out in the Eastern um, regions. As, as you say, you, you know, we are out on a limb. There's not a whole lot to do. And, uh, and, and this is the, the date in the calendar that you mark home and away. It's, uh, 
the football season revolves around this it is absolutely massive and particularly um when you have have the added spice of um it meaning something to you know Ipswich going for automatic promotion we're desperately trying to to kind of sneak into the playoffs so um even more riding on it this time around and how important is this unbeaten run that Norwich are on against Ipswich for you Jack and how much added weight does that bring to this game I think you'll, I think you'll, it does add weight, and I'm not sure if that's a good thing or not. It adds pressure. Um, I, I, there is something to lose for Ips, Ipswich this time around, but it, it almost felt like nothing to lose in previous occasions. You know, we we have been the dominant side. We've had the parachute payment money. We've been the team expected to win these derbies, and that does add a, an element of um, of expectation. And I'm not sure whether that's a, a good thing or not. But yeah, it's bragging rights. It's um, you know, I, I can I can come on here with, with a bit of jip about me and and, and chat to Ben uh, as if we're the we're the greatest club, and that means that means a hell of a lot. And um, when you've gone as long as you have done, each and every time, um, it adds more pressure. I, I genuinely thought, and that this isn't me just saying, I genuinely thought that run was coming to an end um, at, at Portman Road earlier on this season. It didn't, um, and we shall see if. Um, if it does this time around, um, who knows? Maybe the next East Anglian derby might be in the Premier League, and that would be exciting. Ipswich looking more likely to get there than Norwich right now. Um, you obviously played against each other in the playoff semi-finals back in 2015. Norwich won that one. Ben, from your point of view, does this East Anglian derby feel even bigger given the position both clubs are in at this moment in time? Oh, that's a really good question. I don't think it can ever be bigger than the playoff semi-final, can it? Just because of you know, what that, what that means. And it's a, uh, okay. We, I mean, we're pretty damn close to it with six games to go and what it, what it could mean if either side can get a win in this one, but just knowing that winner goes to Wembley and obviously Norwich won at Wembley after that. And I, I agree with Jack's point and I'd be interested to get his take. I, I thought that Norwich squad was light years ahead of the Ipswich squad in 2015 to come down from the Premier League, they're going to bounce straight back. And um, as Mick McCarthy was always very keen to point out, he had no money to spend and he was trying to build it. And um, to actually get it into extra time was was quite something because it was one of those games where um, Norwich were well on top, took the lead, and then it switched, nabbed a goal. And all of a sudden you're thinking, oh, something could happen. This and the red card and, you know, Norwich were going to win from that point. But this is absolutely massive. And maybe if you ask me on Saturday evening, when I know what the result is, you, you could even say it's a it's a bigger game. But we, we all like to retrofit our narratives once we know what's happened, don't we? Jack, how are you feeling in terms of the size of this game compared to that, that playoff? It feels like this is the most even encounter we've had, as you mentioned, probably the first time in, in over a decade that Ipswich are going in as favourites, apart from the reverse fixture. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, that was that was huge. But as Ben mentioned there, it, the the complexity of that game was, you know, and, and, the, and the makeup of it was very different. We were um, almost expecting to get automatics that year. Ipswich had kind of snuck in. I think it was, was it Daryl Murphy who'd kind of propped up that Ipswich side. And and you always felt like it was Norwich's to lose in that. And um, it, it was, and it ended up being a, a, a real difference in class. It's strange, though, the way that the table sits now, you've obviously got an incredible battle for top two and 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 that even within a few hours on on um, on the games on Monday was chopping and changing. I've almost got to a point now where I wouldn't be mad, and this is going to sound crazy, I wouldn't be mad if Ipswich went up automatically because it would mean avoiding them in the playoffs. And if Ipswich were to finish third which is the most likely if they don't go up automatically, then it's probably going to be us in the semi-finals. And do I back us beating Ipswich over two legs? No, I don't. Do I fancy playing Ipswich at Wembley? I couldn't think of anything worse. So, <laughs> um, you know, avo avoiding that uh, inevitable disappointment um, could well be the, the, the best way to go about this. It's lose-lose as, as a Norwich fan. Ipswich fans are probably going to be happy either way. And, and that... Um, doesn't give me huge amounts of joy. So, yeah, it's a it's a fascinating um, time of the season for for all Championship fans, not just Norwich and Ipswich fans. But um, it, the, the the timing of this game couldn't have come um, better. I mean, it's going to be wonderful for the neutral. Um, yeah, really, really interesting end to the season ahead. 
let's turn our attention to Ipswich Town. I keep calling them league leaders because I don't think I quite believe it at this stage of the season. Still, You're not the only one, mate. One team. <laughs> Top of the table, nine wins from your last 10, uh, Ben. That incredible last minute winner over Southampton last time out. Six games to go in the championship, win them all, including this one at Norwich, and you're in the Premier League. Well, you just made it sound really dead straightforward there. Um, I always do this, but it's nine wins out of 10. So another six wins would be 15 wins out of 16. And it does feel like it's going to take that type of run for whoever's going to get the top two. Just as Jack was talking there, just my blood went cold because... Someone is going to finish third with probably 92 to 96 points and could lose in the playoffs. And it is just the ultimate nightmare if that team finishing third with a giant points total was Ipswich and the Conquerors in the playoff semi-final with Norwich. It would be... I'm, I think if you look back in your playoff history, there was a particular season where Portsmouth had... Um, Guy Whittingham scored 42 goals. They finished third, absolutely miles clear of everybody else and lost to Derby, I think, in the playoffs. And the gap between third and sixth this season is going to be the biggest it has ever been in championship history. I think that's guaranteed. And look, I'm a huge proponent of the playoffs. I, I love them and I won't have that they're a lottery. They're brutal, but they're not a lottery. But um, my God, anyway... Yes, Ipswich are top of the league. Um, it's it's insanity, isn't it? It's complete insanity. And yes, um, if you're a self-aware Ipswich fan, you acknowledge that Ipswich were the big bullies in League One with the most money. Yes, they were. And they built an amazing squad in League One. Um, that gets you so far in the championship. But when you're up against Leeds and Leicester and Southampton and, you know, even Jack would admit that some of the players that Norwich have retained and been able to sign are just brilliant squads up there. So we we think it's down to some good long-term management, a hell of a lot of momentum. Um, lots of people are calling it voodoo charms and luck and whatever now. And I think Jack will remember very well in 2018-19 when Norwich won a lot of games late on. Everyone said, look at this lucky Norwich team. Well, they damn well weren't saying that at the end of the season when they were just the best team in the league and it was what it was. I think um, football fans don't like surprises, do they? And um, this Ipswich team has been um, providing them all season. But look, you talk about six games to go. No Ipswich fan can look past Saturday and, you know, getting out of dodge with something, hopefully, from Carrow Road. I want to touch on something you said there about this this luck, perceived luck. I don't think it's luck at all. I think it's just quality and resoluteness. But I saw a stat that was Ipswich have won 3-2 six times at home this season. And in every single one of those games, they've been behind. What makes this Kieran McKenna squad so resolute? And how do they keep doing it? Um, I mean, if you ask Kieran McKenna, he'd give you a textbook answer about following the process, sticking to the philosophy. But every team follows the process and sticks to their philosophy, don't they? We, we, you know, we, we don't have coaches who are just making it up anymore. And, you know, they're, they're ex-players who, you know, just came out of the game and kind of charismatic and good good man managers or, or what have you. Um, I don't know. I really don't know. You, you could argue that Ipswich is just so open that... Um, you know, that explains the two goals they concede in a lot of the games. But as you just pointed out, they've gone behind. Um, look, a number of those games, you'd look at the stats and say, well, Ipswich were deserved winners. But if I'm self-aware, some of them, Southampton last night included, you look at the stats and say, oh, that game's a draw or that game's an, an away win. And um, yeah, I mean, it, it gets a bit galling when you get called lucky week after week. I get why people would do it. I know there's an emotional reason why certain people do it. And that's their way of processing this team that's just winning every week. And why are they doing it? It's easier to say that it's luck than do some analysis and watch some games, isn't it? But um, it does seem a bit fated at this point when you're 
when you're looking at that game against Southampton with Saints dominating, missing two clear chances to go 3-1, 4-1 up. And I'm sitting there as an Ipswich fan going, God, give me 2-2 now and stop the game and I'm done. Red card. And it's like, hang on a minute. Hang on. Seven minutes stoppage time. And I'm going back and reading on Twitter. And I didn't believe it's going to happen. But a lot of people on Twitter are saying, oh, here comes the Ipswich stoppage time winner. And, and it happened. So... Um, I mean, throw it over to Jack and get the get the comparison with Norwich, with Wendir and Pukki in 2018-19, where just whatever situation they were in, they just won, and it seems like that now, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I think you're I think you're right, Bennett. Is that it? Once you've done it a couple of times, it's that belief that you can do it over and over. And I think that the Ipswich Southampton game on Monday was was the perfect example of. The, the 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 real strengths and and um you know failings of, of this Ipswich side go one nil up and I think most teams at that uh, that point would lock up for a little bit and 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 preserve a lead and Southampton get straight back into it it was quite poor defending and they were miles open but it was just that relentlessness of Ipswich at the moment that I think gets them through um, games and not only have you got the belief that you can do it if you're the opposing side Russell Martin trying to set his side up. To, to to not concede again you know you almost know the inevitability of what's coming and, and that's sometimes worse and yeah Daniel Farker had it in in 2018-19 particularly a lot of late goals I think there was a slight difference there was a an element of um, unfamiliarity with that Norwich side and I think this Ipswich team you know came through League One I think a lot did predict this to be the case and and, and yet still people are struggling to um to defend against them. But as a fan, I suspect as a player, as a manager, it's that, it's just that proof of you being able to do it. And that is an incredibly um, fruitful thing to have. You, you you know, what's around the corner and you can just ride on that wave. And um, particularly coming towards the end of the season, it's that belief and that, um, that momentum that carries you through. It was, I don't think there was much difference in quality on the pitch against Southampton for Ipswich's case. Um, but you never felt as if there was any other outcome. It was, um, yeah, it's, it's it's amazing what happens when you go on these runs. They are once in a lifetime types and um, you've just got to, got to embrace them. I don't want to throw some... Uh, cold water on uh, Ben's optimism here, but people <laughs> are injured, obviously against Southampton, Wes Burns and George Hurst out for the season. Any concerns about these injuries as we approach the real key games of the season? Or do you think McKenna's built a squad now that has so much depth and so many options that it doesn't really matter too much? No, massively concerned. If, if Ipswich walk out without Kiefer Moore on Saturday, big problem big problem um, indeed and that's what makes the win against Southampton all the more amazing because Kiefer Moore got taken out of the Cardiff game uh, with stoppage time to go and Ipswich concede a couple of set plays and lose. Um, Kiefer Moore came out of the Blackburn game at 62 minutes and Ipswich cling on by their fingernails for the final half hour um, and yesterday against Southampton you, you imagined oh god He's gone out after um, 34, 35 minutes or something. So, yeah, that would be that would be a big problem. Ali Al Hamadi was playing for AFC Wimbledon up until January down in League Two, and of course he's a cult hero already for some sub goals. And we now have loads of Iraqi fans coming and commenting on all the Blue Monday podcasts, which is which is great. But let me repeat. The lad was playing in League Two, you know, and you're going to go into the most emotional, the most volatile, and whether Jack likes it or not, the hardest game for Ipswich every season. They're in the same league as Norwich. Well, if it's not Norwich at home because of the pressure, it's Norwich away just because of the the cauldron, you know, going going in there. So, yeah, um, big problem with Moore. George Hurst is back out on the grass but like you say you know whether we would see him in a in a potential playoff campaign or not um we don't know um I was better Burns... thinking about a playoff campaign I don't think for you right now if we can keep George Hurst kind of away from the pitch so he recovers for the next season it might be better but a playoff campaign like you say might have to be considered um I just want to throw one over to you Jack 
what were your pre-season expectations for both Norwich and Ipswich? Obviously, we kind of had an idea that this Ipswich team would do fairly well, not this well, not this well, but Norwich it seemed like they would be a mid-table club this season. Are they over overachieving? I wouldn't say overachieving because I think if you look at the budget, you know, we should be within the top six and, you know, our player wage spend and, and, and Ben alluded to it earlier, but the, the transfer fees, you know, that we could demand for some of these players, it feels like top six is, it should be the aim. I, I said we would finish around mid table. That was mainly based around my opinion on David Wagner and last season's performance, you know, nothing had really changed in the summer barring the sales of Omar Bamadeli and Max Aarons and Timmy Puki had left. So in my head that we, we had a, a slightly weaker squad than last season, um, we had the same manager. And I, even now, I'm, I don't particularly rate him too highly. So, um, yeah, I, I thought we were going to be on for, for much of the same. I, I would say I think the league is a, is a little bit weaker than I first thought. You've got the kind of the top four, I would say, it's with Southampton, Leeds and uh, and Leicester. And I think they are far and away better than the, the rest. You've got kind of Hull and Preston and Coventry. <sighs> I'm not sure there's a whole load of quality in, in any of those sides, really. So it's a bit of a, a, a mix and match between um, the, those you know, chasing now us and sort of West Brom. In terms of Ipswich, a fascinating one because you know, you would assume the jump from League One to the Championship. It, I don't think it's as, as much as the jump between other leagues, but you you don't you, well, you rarely see teams go on from a promotion and and put the kind of season together the Ipswich have. But they were really spoken about highly from particularly those in the betting industry. I know I think they went off about sixteen to one to to win the division. Loads of people I know were were having you know some some um, some real uh, fondness for Ipswich, and I think the numbers they put up in League One last season are translated nicely. You've got one of the best head coaches in the division. You've got a squad that is riding high and. Uh, is 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 well um, is well oiled, and I, I think people realise that they could ride that wave. I mean, you know, Ben's always humble with it, but I, I suspect that you know, in, in a quiet um, room, if you were one on one with an Ipswich fan, come the end of the season, they were probably expecting to be challenging for the top six. Um, so yeah, I, I think Norwich are about where they should be. Despite that, I think you know they they particularly in the last couple of months have outperformed what I thought they would. Um, Ipswich are, are, are above expectation, but I still think both of these sides at the start of this season, you would have said, should be in and around the top six. Yeah, I want to talk to you quickly about the the men in the dugout because there's very different feelings from both fans towards their current managers. Um, ben, let's start with you. Kieran McKenna, what, what more can be said about him? I want to know how high you think he can go and hopefully that'll be with Ipswich, but if not, where next for McKenna as well? Well, on the basis of what he's done so far, sky's the limit, isn't it? Um, you just never know um, in terms of, is he just the right fit at the right point at this right club? Or could he go on to a West Ham that you think might become available at the end of the season or a Brighton if De Zerbe goes to do another job? They seem to be the ones that always get linked. Um, yes, again, humble, self-aware, he had the most money in League One. So you would expect promotion from League One, but many tried and many failed. And if you talk to Leeds and Forest and Sheffield Wednesday and Sheffield United fans, League One is not easy to get out of. Um, but you, you can't now after this championship run where you've got these three ridiculous uh, relegated year one parachute teams where... You'd think if Ipswich were within 25 points of those three teams, McKenna's doing a good job. And sitting here right now, they're above all three of them in a record-breaking season. So his stock is so so massively high, and um, you would think that would translate into a, a top job or a Premier League job at some point. You mentioned West Ham and Brighton. I was going to aim even a little bit higher than that. And obviously his previous links with Manchester United a club that could also be uh, looking for a new manager this summer, new ownership. Any feelings on how he'd perform there if given the chance? It's just a diff it's a different sport when it's Man United, isn't it? You know, it's just like the biggest, most newsworthy, clickable club in the world. It would be 
we would be incredibly proud if we could provide Manchester United with their next manager. But if I was him, I wouldn't touch it with a barge pole. And I think he's <laughs> quite a quite a shrewd operator. But you don't turn down the Man United job. But I I, I can't see that happening, despite the um the links back um, with Mourinho and Carrick there. Let's go back to uh, David Wagner. You touched on him a little bit there, Jack. Norwich fans seem to have this very odd relationship with the manager at the moment in the fact that he's getting some pretty decent results. You've got some of the finest attacking talent in the league. Yet, as we saw against Leicester, it was like when the game was there to be attacked, you sat back and, and the game was lost. He, he could be the most unpopular manager to ever secure promotion to the Premier League this season, I feel. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it is an intriguing one. I, I think you know I'm a I'm a season ticket holder at, at Cow Road, and if you if you hadn't have watched the away performances this year and just home games, you would have assumed that Norwich were top of the league. I mean, we've been really good, particularly in 2024, and we've been attacking. And as you mentioned there, you've got Borja Science and Josh Sargent and Gabby Sarah. Like there's some real quality in the side, and when they get going, Norwich are unstoppable. Um, and then, yeah, Monday were a great example of a, of a game a get, a granted against Leicester. And, you know, they've got serious Premier League quality in that side. But it was there for the taking. We took the lead, well-worked set piece, um, and then nothing. And it, that has been the story, of particularly the away games this season. But um, feeling like a, a lack of ability to change games within that 90 minutes and a, and a slight... Um, I'm not sure he's as tactically as shrewd as other head coaches in this division. Um, but the the one thing that Wagner has always had, and I think it's so important, is at no point have you felt like he's lost the dressing room. The players have always spoken really highly of him. He's always stayed um, friendly with the press. And that hasn't been the case when you look at our last couple of managers with Dean Smith and towards the end, Farkas, you know, turned a little bit. And I think he got a little bit defensive. Wagner's always held his hands up and said, look, I'm trying my best here. I've got a good group of players. I, you know, he still believes that he can take them forward. Look, I, I, I think there's a new sporting director at Norwich in Ben Napper. I think whether we stay in this division or we get promoted next season, Wagner won't be the head coach next season. I'm, I'm, I'm fairly confident of that. But it's diff it is difficult to, to keep criticising a, a head coach who, one, is, has turned it around and is starting to win games. But also he's, he's incredibly pleasant. You know, he's a nice guy. And um, clearly when it's working, he, he, he can make it work. But, you know, I... I I don't think too many clubs would have kept their head coach um, with the form that we saw kind of through October and November. I mean, we were really, really bad. Then I think we we're down to about 19th. In, in that. Jack, that Blackburn game, man. Yeah. 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 Awful. I mean, there were some really, really dark um, displays um, it, during that time. I, I can recall a defeat to Middlesbrough. Blackburn was a great example. That was on television. And, I'm, you know, I'm getting loads of people messaging me going, how is, how is Wagner still the head coach? Well, he is. And um, I think we got to a stage where we just had to accept the hand that we had. You know, Wagner was going nowhere um, and, and, and we're just going to have to, you know, deal with this situation. He is very lucky that he's still got a job and he's very lucky that he's got an incredibly talented squad because I think, um, you know, he wouldn't have survived this uh, at, at other teams. Ben, I'd like to get your kind of thoughts on, on Wagner at Norwich this season, because from an outside point of view, I think we're as bemused as kind of Jack is on the inside at what's going on there. As you mentioned, the home record's incredible. The away record's awful. Well, I would obviously bow to Jack's superior knowledge. Um, just when you were saying it, most unpopular manager to get promotion, speak to the Fulham and Bournemouth fans who do well <laughs> to beat Scott Parker, okay, in both of those occasions. <laughs> um, so... I did a video about this recently and Jack actually commented on it um, in respects of, I think availability of players was a big thing. I mean, Sergeant in the championship is quality um, and getting him back was, was absolutely key. Not that you can put a team down to one player. Um, I do like it when a manager is given time, but I'm not going to sit here across from a season ticket holder who's watching every game saying, yeah, you can just give everybody time when the football's horrible and the performances are horrible. I totally agree with Jack that um, squad-wise and strength-wise and just the know-how of Norwich as a club at championship level, they're never going to be far off it, are they? And 
you know, par for Norwich should be should be the top six. And I know he had some iffy times in between, but to take Huddersfield up, okay, that was like 16, 17, the way he did it as a massive underdog shows that he's got real credibility at, um, at championship level. But then Norwich sacked the manager who's got the most credibility out of anyone at championship level. And he's now at Leeds. So, um, you know, it's all about the fit at the time. So, yeah, I I thought he was going to get sacked after that Blackburn game. I've got to, I've got to admit, but fair play, they've stuck with him, and he's playing the cards as as Jack suggested. And um, yeah, I'm a lot more concerned about what he's built now than when the game. When was the game? Jack it was December, wasn't it? The it was, yeah, yeah, and 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 even that. I mean, it was individual quality from John Rowe that that kind of got us out of a mess. It, it was far from it being a great system or, you know, tactically shrewd. It was a couple of chances. Fell Jack, to... they did lock up nicely at 2-2, though. They could have gone under at 2-2, couldn't they, Norwich? And they they played it out fairly well, I think, didn't they? Yeah, but, you know, you miss big chances. I mean, we tried to lock up against Leicester. We've tried to lock up a lot of times this season. It, it, it That's not been a sustainable method. So I, 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 I think that was probably an anomaly uh, okay. on, on that time. I think if you were to extrapolate that type of um, approach across a season, it's not gonna it's not gonna bring you too many points. I wanted to go back to Norwich's home and away record because I written down that they've got the third best home record this season in championship and the nineteenth worst away <laughs> record in terms of just picking up points. Picked up more points than Leicester, West Brom, and Southampton all at home. Why is that, Jack? Is it just because you play more front-footed attacking football and feel more comfortable at home? Is there a, a weak mentality within the squad when it comes to going to these tough away games? It's really, really difficult to explain. I think if, you, if, you, if you're making it simple, it, it is solely down to approach. Now, why the approach is so different, I couldn't tell you. I, you know, so often this season, particularly over the last um, couple of months, we've just blown teams away, you know, and... That, that in terms of the strengths in this Norwich squad, we have far more quality in the in the front areas than we do defensively. So you would think that we would um, that we would play to those strengths. But yeah, I mean, I mean we've scored plenty at home. Um, the, the atmosphere has been really good recently, which I, which I think helps. Um, but away from home, it, 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 so often this season we've taken the lead and then gone on to lose. And it, it, we've started games in the first twenty minutes, and we've been on the front foot and we've taken the lead. And then it's like almost damage limitation from that point. And, you know, Watford, I'm trying to think of Middlesbrough, Leicester, the three that popped to my head, go ahead, look really good, concede. And then, and then once that, you know, once Norwich have conceded away from home, it's, it's floodgates. So yeah, it has been a huge contrast. It's been deeply, deeply frustrating. It feels like a quick fix, although it always does when you're a football fan. I'm, I'm sure it, it, it's far more complex within the dressing room. But yeah, it has been, you know, from, from the eye test, um, a complete a completely different setup. And, and that is baffling as to why. That's obviously this game is at Carrow Road, which is a, a huge uh, benefit for Norwich. It's got a point away at Ipswich. Touched on it there. Uh, Carrow Road atmosphere this season. Has it been pretty good? And, and what's it going to be like on Saturday? Spectacular, I hope. Yeah, it'll be bouncing. It'll be absolutely bouncing. It's been really good over the past um, couple of months. It, it did turn relatively toxic. There, it, there was a mixture of Stuart Webber, um, our old sporting director on the way out, it was um, it coupled with some really poor form from from the side. So it did turn. Weber then left, which lifted the mood a, a little bit and kind of got rid of that toxicity. Um, and I think you know you can only moan for so long before you start boring yourself. And um, <laughs> that was that was almost the case with with David Wagner. Once we realised that he was the man that would take us. Uh, up until the end of the season it is kind of well you support him or you give up on the season and you know it, you would much rather support someone so it's been good Norwich have been winning games and even you know I know the last couple of wins have been against like Plymouth and Rotherham but we've beaten um we've drawn to Southampton we've beaten Coventry we've beaten West Brom like there's been some good wins in there so um yeah it will be it will be bouncing it always is for these these East Anglian derbies and um I'm sure Ipswich will, will come in numbers it's uh yeah it will be it will be exciting 
We're going to finish this week's podcast with five big questions, which I'll ask and they're for both of you to answer. So I'll start with the first one, which is, what is your favourite Derby Day moment? Ben, should we hear from you first? Well, I'm old, so I remember Ipswich beating Norwich 5-0 at Portman Road and Alex Maffey scoring a first-half hat-trick and a Dutch winger called Bobby Petter scoring um, two goals in the second half. So, God, I think that was 98, possibly. Um, so, yeah, obviously a 5-0 home win. Um, amazing. More like I you, think, Jack. Yeah, I think for me, I mean, Ben's obviously, um, you know, slightly uh, smug at the moment. When he's, um, you know, his side of top of the division. Uh, the, the last time I can think of Norwich being top of the division in the same league as Ipswich, um, Ipswich were bottom, which made it even even more joyous. And uh, we rocked up at Carrad. I think it was 3-0. Pukki scored. Hernandez scored. It was just a complete men against boys situation. It was one of the only derbies I can remember going into knowing that we were going to win. And um, that was glorious because it almost took the edge off the nerves a little bit. And, you know, we knew that Ipswich were being relegated. We knew at kind of that point that, that our our promotion had, had, had almost been secured and that just pressure off complete and utter relentless gloatfulness against your rivals. It's good it after like, about a minute, didn't they, as yeah, well? Sort of, yeah. Something like 40 seconds. Um, yeah. So yeah, that 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 sticks in the mind. It's a lovely sunny Jack, day. Paul Lambert played a narrow midfield against Buendia and Max Aaron's, and you're like, oh my god, <laughs> this is going to be gnarly. <laughs> Everything that could have gone right did that day, and um, I don't think there's too many derbies where you can you can look back and go, yeah, that was absolutely perfect. You might have a different answer for me, both of you, after this weekend. We'll have to wait and see. <laughs> um, next big question. If you could pick one player from the opposition to go straight into your starting eleven, who would it be? Oh, is this to weaken them or to strengthen? Because <laughs> obviously Norwich <laughs> without strength. Norwich without Sergeant, than your team. Yeah, would be really, really helpful. Um, God, just quickly over the years, Darren Eady, Craig Bellamy, um, Emmy Buendia was just different level. Um, at the moment, if he was fit, probably Johnny Rowe, because he's just a fantastic player. But tactically, to weaken Norwich, it would be Sargent. Yeah, I, I think Sargent's the standout for us. I'd probably say Leif Davis. I'd, I'd been hearing so much about him and I couldn't I couldn't really work out what it was. And now I've really understood it over the last couple of months. He is... He is that engine room, and and I don't think teams still know how to um how to defend against him. He is almost the the, the complete version of kind of our two left backs in McCallum and Yanulis. Both of those are attacking minded, but there's a real weakness in both of their games in certain areas. I don't think Leif Davis has that. The other one is 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 Sam Morsey, and, it, and maybe it's just because I, I tune into it such at the wrong times. But I've never been overly impressed with the way he goes about things. But I think it. it to have that type of player in a derby match is is cru is crucial, and uh, I don't think Norwich really, on paper, have one of those players. So yeah, Morsi and um, and and Davis are probably the two. I mean, Davis is you know just absolutely sublime when you watch him. He's so exciting. Another goal again for him this weekend as well. He's, he has been incredible, and the numbers he's put up have, have been incredible as well. Right, next big question: How do you think each of your teams would have fared this season? And where would they be in the table if you had the opposition's manager in charge? So if Norwich had Kieran <laughs> McKenna, where would they be? And if Ipswich had David Wagner, where on earth would they be? Jack? <laughs> oh, don't I mean that's just a cruel question to, to pose, isn't it? I, I suspect we've already be already won the league, 100 points, 100 goals. <laughs> Um, I mean, it, honestly, though, if you look at the squad, so we'll go through this bit by bit. Angus Gunn in goal, you would you could have a, a genuine conversation that he's the best goalkeeper in the division. Defence, not so sure, but you've got Jack Stacey there who's played a hell of a lot of games at, at this level and is incredibly capable. Midfield, Gabby Sara, you know, numbers-wise, the best midfielder in the division. Johnny Rowe is injured. You've got Borja Science, who is electric and, and incredibly exciting. And then Josh Sargent up front who's in terms of minutes per goal is the best in this division by a long way. So you've got a core there of a really good bunch. 
And I think the one thing we're missing is a, is a capable head coach. So, yeah, I, I really like McKenna. I've been bigging him up to everyone, hoping that he would leave in January. That never happened. You know, every time you see like sort of Crystal Palace sacking their manager, you go, oh, would, would he swap it? You know, the, this this project for a, for a Premier League side that hasn't happened. I think he is incredibly likable which is annoying he's um he's he's shrewd he's calm he is everything you want in a head coach um and that is very annoying um yeah we would be top two with McKenna there is no doubt in my mind about that and we would have a much better defensive record <laughs> <laughs> that's a very polite way of putting it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How would this Ipswich team look under Wagner in honesty? Would it be a, you know, a mid-table slash bottom half team? Is that how important McKenna is and his system? Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't want to dig out poor old David Wagner. Let's so let's make it positive about McKenna. And I think in the championship, if you've had your manager for over a season, you'll be in the top percentile for continuity. And I think a lot of you know, the momentum and stuff came from League One last season. Look, if you go into a playoff tournament, would you rather have a McKenna, Maresca, Martin process type, or would you rather have a bastard, Mark Robbins, um, you know, Carlos Corberon, especially uh, David Wagner? So, you know, we'll see in the playoffs um, which managers, you know, German managers and tournament football and all that. So, you know, keep, keep watching. I think that's a really, really valid point. I think whoever finishes third out of, you know, Leeds, Leicester, Ipswich is going to have a really tough time. It's probably going to be Norwich in, in sixth. And the same with West Brom and Corbrand, the way they've been playing this season. I think they're really going to cause probably Southampton a lot of, a lot of problems. Right, let's uh, get some predictions on the line. Next big question, do Ipswich Town finish in the top two? I nearly put do Ipswich win the league, but I put top two to kind of, you know, keep things calm. Ben, let's start with you. Well, I've never at any point this season predicted Ipswich to finish in the top two. Even going into the Easter weekend, I, you know, I look at the Leicester squad, I look at the game in hand and I look at the goal difference and I think it's going to be massively, massively tight. And that concluded me to think that Leicester would finish in the top two. I mean, this Ipswich team are pushing me. I tell you, they're blooming pushing me for the prediction because obviously clinging on against Blackburn, win. Look like you're going to go 4-1 down against Southampton and win again. You mentioned earlier, nine wins out of 10. They could do it. And if they did it, I mean, Luton did something bloody incredible last season. Um, but top two this season would be sensational. I'm ignoring the question, and I'm going to repeat, I have never at any point predicted Ipswich to finish in the top two yet this season. Jack Reeve. That, that is the answer of a very nervy football fan, and, <laughs> uh, and, I, and I like that. I, look, I think you'd be a fool to say that they wouldn't. Uh, I, Leicester, Leicester are the intriguing one here. I think, Le I think Leeds are really impressive, and I think they've got talent, and you would Leeds expect them. Leeds got the guy in the dugout who knows how to do this as well. You've got that as well, and, and Fark has been here. You know he's he's got the 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 scars and the and, and everything from the championship. So, but the, the you know that they have faltered at times this season. Leicester, I, I don't know how to judge. Um, you know, you just assumed that they were going to run away with the title, and they faltered. And even on Monday in their win against us, like they were they kind of relied on individual quality more than a system to dig them out. And, and that can get you through games. And I think that was incredibly important. I think Jujubee Hall called it their cup final on Monday. And I, th I think the importance of that can't be underestimated, but you just look at this Ipswich side and they find their way through games and they, and the, you know, whatever it takes, they seem to get it done. I think that the, the squad thinness might may well be a concern. I, I, there's some tricky games left to come. It's going to be really tight. I honestly, I think they will. I think they will get top two. Um, who at the expense of who? I'm not sure. Um, but I, I just think with with this few games left, Jack. Sorry, can I just come in? Do you think if that happens, that means Leicester are going to fudge a few more games? You know, maybe like against the Gary Row at Birmingham side, he gets a draw or something muggy like that. Yeah, it also 
it also really depends on how this weekend goes. You know, a, a defeat in this in, in the East Anglia derby, who knows, might derail your season. I know after the 2-2 draw, you went on a bit of a sticky run and mm-hmm. lots of draws in that. So I think it, it will be easier to assess that question come final, you know, full time on, on Saturday. But I think out of Leicester, Ipswich and Leeds... Ipswich are just on that run and you, you see it season in, season out, don't you? That side that, that just hits form at the right time. And I think that's happened um, with Ipswich. I think they will do it. I think, thanks for getting off the fence for at least one. <laughs> day, Jack. I mean, for what, I, for what it's worth, I think Ipswich will probably finish second at this point behind Leeds. And I just think the experience of the managers is, is crucial. There's a manager yeah. who won the championship twice already as a manager who knew what it was like to be in this sort of promotion race last season in league one mm-hmm. and then there's Enzo Maresco who hasn't experienced something like this before and I think that ultimately will be the difference so I'm I'm positive on Ipswich I'm also kind of positive on Norwich which brings me to my next question do Norwich finish in the playoffs do Norwich finish in the top six I think we do yeah I think we do uh more because I don't really rate the chasing pack um I I I, I thought for the, a lot of this season that it was going to be Hull um I think West Brom West Brom are an interesting side and I think really watch out for them because they've Good almost manager. Just, Good they've manager, almost Jack. yeah they, they've avoided every conversation that they, they've never really been in doubt for the playoffs they've never been in a, in with a chance of top two so they've kind of just gone about business very nicely and yeah they're I'd say they're the team that, that you would be concerned about if you're finish, you know, you're finishing in third and you've put in a great effort this season and you just miss out and you you get West Brom and you go, oh, here we go. But yeah, I, I, Coventry have obviously got the um, got the FA Cup coming up and even then, I, I, I'm not sure about their squad. Hull have really faltered in the last couple of weeks. Preston, I, I don't think have ever truly been in it. So. Yeah, you look at it, Norwich have got quite a, a, a nice run after the Ipswich game. Um, good squad, relatively injury-free. I think we will sneak into sixth. Whether we go up is, is another question, but I think in terms of top six, we should be okay. Ben, what about you? Uh, thoughts on Norwich finishing in the playoffs? Yeah, I can I can see it playing out how Jack suggests. The And for me, yeah, the only fly in the ointment could be Coventry, but they would have to go on a hell of a... Hell of a tear. I think I'm higher on Coventry squad than than Jack is, possibly. I think other than the the parachute teams, obviously they spent the Jokeres and Hamer money, and I think they tooled up quite nicely. It's fascinating when you start playing it out, though, because you could really see Carlos Corbran doing a job on Russ Martin in a playoff semi final to get to to get to Wembley. I think you can beat West Brom. At Wembley, it just depends who drops into that third place spot. And oh my God, I'm I'm genuinely contemplating. I know it will be massive numbers and all of that. I'm contemplating, Jack. Just not if it's if it's. I just shut my channel down for for, <laughs> for the, the, the. I I don't know if my heart could take it if it's playoffs again. My God. Yeah, it's. Um, I think you're, you're bang on about Cole Brown against Martin. I, I, I suspect. I, I obviously don't try to work it on my head who plays who, but I think West Brom probably do get to. Wembley. Um, I think they're a really, a really tidy outfit. And um, yeah, not not overly sure about Southampton. It was really sweet on them at the start of the season, went on a horrible run, turned it around. Thought they were really naive against Ipswich. Um yeah, it's gonna be it's going to be really intriguing um from, from now on in. I, I I was gonna say I can't wait. I can wait. <laughs> well done for not backing your mate Russ as well, Jack. Well done. Well, you know, yeah. I, I, I don't know. It's, um, it's Easily done, isn't it? It is, yeah. I'll throw the commentary. I'm a commentary fan, so I need to throw the commentary point of view into this this playoff. After a, after a very painful defeat to Cardiff at home, where Liam Kitchen scored two of the best own goals you'll ever see, <laughs> um, I think we've got probably the best manager in the championship, but I don't think the squad's there in terms of injuries. We've also got to play our next two games are Leeds and Southampton. We've still got to play Ipswich, and I think that's... And Hull as well, I think. And Hull, which is a few days after the semi-final. So I think next season will be a really positive season in the Championship for Coventry with a weaker division. I don't think we'll finish in the playoffs. I don't think Norwich are in a great place. And I agree with what you both said about Hull in terms of, I don't know what they did in January. It was a massive gamble and it's it doesn't look to have, have paid off. 
Um, right, let's bring this back to the final question because this is an East Anglian derby sportsman title special, which means, Ben, I'm going to need you to get off the fence as well for this one. He never I want, does. He never I want does. a score <laughs> prediction. Score prediction from both of you. And I want you to puff your chests out and, and say it and stick by it. If you can okay. get if you can get a, an off the fence answer here, then you're a, a better presenter than I've ever been. No, no, but this is if your premise is me saying this game is going to be drawn when we've just said how massively <laughs> tight it is is sitting off the fence, then I I reject your premise completely. <laughs> Look, you would love to go to Norwich and I sound like Kevin Keegan, don't I? And get the win. I think Kiefer Moore's fitness is a giant factor in whether Ipswich can do that or not, when you bunched up the games, if you'd have told me you got seven points out of Blackburn away, Southampton home and Norwich away, and even condensing that four points out of Southampton and Norwich, then I would have been a very, very happy camper knowing you know what's coming thereafter and the potential to win some games. So there's been a lot of 1-1 draws in this. Obviously, it was a 2-2 draw. So I'll I'll stick my neck out. I'm probably going to be on about 50 channels this week um, being asked to do this. So I'm going to do a different scoreline on every <laughs> every single one. But I'll start with a 1-1 one, one here. I think maybe Norwich will take the lead and Ipswich will equalise. Norwich won, Ipswich won. I that's, think that's, that's quite good. That's a solid prediction there, Jack. You happy with that answer for, for yeah. Ben? Well, I would take a draw. I th- you know, Ben is a, an intelligent championship aficionado, so you'd expect such a cultured response out of him. I'm far less uh, of, of that type. I can't come on here and say anything other than a than a Norwich win. Um, look, I think it all depends on the setup, and you would back Norwich at home to get something. We have players to hurt any side in this division. Josh Sargent, Gabby Sara, Borja Science. You know, I would fancy them against um, Ipswich's defence to, to to cause some to, to cause some havoc, and, and Ipswich have conceded plenty of goals this season. They've also scored a hell of a lot as well. Do I back our defence to keep them out? No, I don't. I think there will be goals. Um, I it might my, my my head says a draw. My heart says we we edge this one. Throw Ipswich's um, title raise off course. They lose uh, in the playoffs and uh, McKenna sort of drives into the sunset and they go, oh, that was fun while it lasted and kind of uh, revert Re- Relegated back to next season, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> revert back to tight. No, I, I think they've got a good, a good thing going it. But yeah, um, yeah, incredibly difficult to call. I will say Norwich edge it by a goal. Um, I will say 3-2, bit of a thriller. Sounds like of your your derailing Ipswich's season with this win that you are setting up that playoff <laughs> final that we all want to see. You know, there's no good outcome there. There is no good outcome. <laughs> um, it was it was a strange one on Monday, wasn't it? Because you know we we just lost to Leicester, and the the the, the kind of the back of my mind of going. And no, that all was the a... Ipswich fans wanted you to beat them. <laughs> well, this is the thing. I'm going actually. No, that that was a good result for us because it might mean that Leicester, you know, overtake Ipswich, and I'm going oh, the that the knots you tie yourself in as a football fan at this time of the season is unbearable. We can only do what um, you know we're best at, and that's you know scoring goals and attacking. And um, I think for for the neutral, it's going to be an absolute thriller for, for for Ben and I and the other tens of thousands of blue and white and, and yellow and green um, football fans. It's going to be hellish and uh, bring it on. That I totally agree with. <laughs> I think that's the perfect way to finish, guys. Thanks so much for joining me, Ben and Jack. I wish you both the best of luck on Saturday. I hope your nerves make it through. Maybe with a few beers, it'll be fine. Uh, but that's it for this episode of The Sportsman Untitled, and we'll see you next time.